Welcome to the July 2014 episode of Iowa City in Focus. I'm your host, Mary Bryant. Now, if you're at all familiar with the City of Iowa City's strategic plan, you'll know that the City Council recently identified healthy neighborhoods as one of its priorities in its mission to foster a more sustainable and inclusive Iowa City. On this month's episode, I'll talk with Tracy Achenbach, the Executive Director of the Housing Trust Fund of Johnson County, one of the organizations that the City of Iowa City Housing Authority helps to fund in order to promote affordable housing and healthy neighborhoods. We'll also feature the City of Iowa City's 10-year-old public art program, Poetry in Public, and you'll get a glimpse of Party in the Park. Stay tuned. Today I'm talking with Tracy Achenbach, the Executive Director of the Housing Trust Fund of Johnson County. So Tracy, can you start off, tell me a little bit about the Housing Trust Fund and its mission here in Johnson County. Sure. The Housing Trust Fund was actually started by a group of people starting to talk about it in 2002 and then we formally became a 501c3 in 2004. Mm -hmm. So we've been in existence for 10 years. Our mission is to support and promote affordable housing, which of course is difficult in Johnson County. Um, I have an 18 member board and um, we make funding available to housing organizations and agencies, housing developers, anyone who promotes and supports affordable housing, which means housing for people with low to moderate income. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about affordable housing. Um, how does the availability of affordable housing impact the whole community? Oh, well. To me, of course, I'm a little biased, but I think housing is the key to everything. It, it provides, there's a lot of studies that show that housing provides stability for families. It impacts school districts, as we all know perfectly well with what has been going on in our community. Um, so let me, let me, can I just define what affordable housing is? Please. So affordable housing, most of the time is considered, when I talk about affordable housing, what that means is housing that is costing people less than 30% of their income. And especially affordable housing is usually talked about in the realm of to people of low to moderate income. So let me give you just an example. First of all, let me say low to moderate income means one person would be low to moderate income if they have income of 44,000 or 500 or below in Johnson County. A three person household is somewhere in the range of 55,000. So um, let's say that someone in Johnson County is making $12 an hour. So that comes out to about $25,000 a year. They would need to have housing that if it's gonna be affordable, their total housing costs, that means utilities, um, the cost to either rent or own, their mortgage payment, if they're doing that, um, their real estate taxes, all of that would have to be less than $625 a month. And in Johnson County, right, that doesn't, that doesn't really, um, anymore that doesn't happen. And that is the reason our agency is needed because we provide funding to developers or housing organizations or service organizations that provide housing to people at those income levels. So what we can do then, bringing our money into it actually maybe lowers the cost uh, for either creating new housing or preserving housing um, so that they will be able to make it affordable to people at lower income. We'll return to my conversation with Tracy in a moment. But first, let's hear about the City of Iowa City's public art program, Poetry in Public. Back in 2001, as anybody who's familiar with Iowa City knows, the um, literary walk on Iowa Avenue um, was installed as part of the public art program that celebrate the work of authors and poets that have some connection with Iowa. Um, so possibly they were born and raised here, they lived here at some point, they attended the writer's workshop. And as part of that, the whole connection between literature and public art kind of made that connection. And because Iowa City is what it is in terms of um, hosting so many talented writers, um, the thought was let's come up with something on an annual basis that we can encourage the local 
writers to participate in and, um, and continue to celebrate that on an annual basis. So we came up with a Poetry in Public program. The poet has to be a Johnson County resident. Um, the poem can be no longer than seven lines long. Um, there is really no theme. They can write about whatever um, they wish. It can be an excerpt from a longer poem if they can find one or they have one um, that they would like to extract that out of. Um, a lot of the schools, the teachers will initiate getting their classes involved in writing poetry and occasionally you'll see themes come up. We um, determine the number of poems that we select based on ironically the number of city buses that we have in our fleet simply because um, we put three different poems in each one of the buses so we multiply the number by three and come up with how many we need so that number has changed as we've added to the fleet every year. The end result with the poetry is that um, we display it on a poster. These are the posters that are actually laminated and installed in the buses. They're also on display at um, both Mercer Recreation Center as well as the downtown Robert A. Lee Center, um, the Senior Center, all five of the different um, downtown kiosks. The Iowa City Public Library has also um, taken the collages of the poetry that we've developed for the kiosk and they will take them and, and post them and we post them on the website. To further expand upon the Poetry in Public program um, during Arts Fest, um, which is a Summer of the Arts um, program and always occurs the first weekend in June, we host um, the opportunity for po poets who are interested to actually get up on stage um, to read their poems. Also, the cable TV um, Channel 4 folks have um, taken upon themselves to invite the poets in and film them reading their poetry, which is always um, fun because so many times I, I, I don't see the faces that are connected to the poetry. And then it's always interesting to hear the poets read their poetry the way that they put um, emphasis maybe in different areas in which you would expect them to do. Um, and they personalize it. It's been very successful. It's something that um, a number of folks look forward to year in and year out. We do um, a lot of connection with the schools, um, both the public and the private schools, to encourage that the students participate, and um, it's looked forward to on a regular basis or on an annual basis. Now let's return to my conversation with Tracy Achenbach for more on the Housing Trust Fund of Johnson County's support of affordable housing in the community. Can you talk a little bit about uh, some of your projects or accomplishments that um, have supported affordable housing here? Sure. This is one of the projects that we helped fund. It's um, a project of the Housing Fellowship, who is a, uh, another housing nonprofit provider mm -hmm. in Johnson County. Um, so we brought in some funding. They got funding from a lot of uh, sources, federal and state, in order to do this. But we also were able to provide a gap for them in order to help them create these housing units. And then they, in turn, um, rent them to people and make them affordable to people that um, have lower income in our county. Um, as you can see, they're really nice units. They're beautiful, they're beautiful units, yes. yes. So that's one of the, and that's one of actually our missions because we are to promote and support affordable housing. Mm -hmm. We also um, have a responsibility to educate people on what really it means to create or promote affordable housing. So how much funding have you provided within the county and where does that funding come from? Well, since we just celebrated our 10 year anniversary, we were very happy to be able to announce that we had just awarded a little over 3 million in the last 10 years to housing organizations. And this has impacted, we were three housing units shy of 300. So it's impacted 297 housing units in Johnson County. Our funding actually gets, um, it comes from the Iowa Finance Authority, but we, the Iowa Finance Authority is given funding if it's appropriated by the state legislature, if we're lucky, and it's only been one, I think, out of the last 10 years that it hasn't happened. But um, the legislature appropriates funds and then also a portion of the state real estate transfer tax is given to the Iowa Finance Authority who then turns around and awards it to the housing trust funds in the state. There are actually 27 housing trust funds in the state. So we're one of 27, but we're also one of the early ones, one of the 
first formed housing trust funds. So what more would you like the community to know about the Housing Trust Fund of Johnson County? Well, we are a nonprofit, so anyone who wants to uh, contribute money to us, I will gladly accept it. Mm -hmm. um, it is tax deductible since we are a nonprofit. Um, we are a great organization. I really believe in this organization and the way that we um, are able to process the money. In the past, we've given a lot of loans, so the money revolves over and over again. Mm. So any money that we receive, which by the way, I should mention that Johnson County, the city of Iowa City, the city of North Liberty, and the city of Coralville have all been really generous in also contributing to us. So. Um, their money and the state money and anybody else who contributes to us, um, I feel that their money goes a long way to create and promote affordable housing in Johnson County. Just kind of gives back to the yes. whole community. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for talking with me today, Tracy, and, and thanks so much for all the work you do to support our community. Well, thanks for inviting me to do this and thanks for giving me the opportunity to brag about our organization. Learn more about the Housing Trust Fund of Johnson County by going online at www.htfjc.org. Today I'm out at Reno Street Park, one of Iowa City's hidden gems. Party in the Park will be held here on July 31st, so mark your calendars. Have you made it out to a Party in the Park yet? These fun weekly events, organized by the City of Iowa City's Parks and Recreation Department, include live music, arts and crafts, games, ice cream, and a whole lot of fun. If you're still not convinced, check out this party in the park, which was held earlier in the summer at the Terry Trueblood Recreation Area. Park will continue to be held every Thursday from 6.30 to 8 p.m. at a different park throughout July and concludes for the summer on August 7th. Check out the schedule so you too can enjoy live music and great company in a beautiful setting. You can watch all of these segments again by visiting citychannel4.com video or by turning to Channel 5 and calling in to Video On Demand. Check out our other programs while you're there. Also, you can like us on Facebook to receive updates about other City Channel 4 programs you may enjoy. Find us there at facebook.com slash citychannel4. You can also keep up with City Hall by liking the City of Iowa City Government on Facebook, following it on Twitter, or checking out icgov.org. There on the City's website, you can subscribe to receive various newsletters, media releases, and other notifications based on your own interests. Thanks for watching this month's episode and keeping Iowa City in focus. You're watching City Channel 4 on TV, online, on demand, on Facebook, and now on the go on your mobile device.